My name is Umaru Sandama. When we come back, I'll My guest on Face to Face is a North Tongue member of Parliament. He speaks for the minority side in Parliament on foreign affairs. His recent preoccupation, though, has been exposés in relation to the National Cathedral. He's doing a job of investigative journalist now, even though he's been given another title that he's wearing happily, a demon. The Honorable Samuel Pietro Blackwell is my guest. You're welcome. Hi, thank you, Maru. Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy looking like year. First time on the show yeah, this year. Yeah, you're uh, looking like a fine devil. No, fine demon, rather. I think his demon is more appropriate, right? But demons yeah, are generally um, nice. I, I think I left my horns at home. <laughs> you know, I, I forgot to take my horns today. But how, how, how is it coming, though? All the, all the, all the backlash. Do you, do you get people attacking you? Oh, yes. I mean, it's been uh, quite a vicious attack. There's a lot of vitriol, you know, a lot of, you know, vituperations out there. Um, I think that some of them, uh, you may want to excuse them because they are fanatic followers of their papas mm -hmm. or fathers in the Lord, and they see them as almost, you know, angels on earth. They can't do any wrong. Untouchables. Uh, untouchables. How dare a mere mortal like me, a sinful son of man from North Tong, to question their integrity and to demand, you know, accountability from these people they see as God's own, you know, disciples on earth. So mm -hmm. there's that group who you may want to just, you know, uh, uh, forgive them. Jesus Christ told us to turn the other cheek, you know, and forgive 77 times and more. So you want to take it easy. But then there are those who, some of them journalists who you expect, you know, to know better, uh, to even collaborate with you, to seek accountability. That one is quite, you know, um, surprising and it's telling. And, and, and there are times that you wonder, are they doing mercenary work? Have they been, you know, contracted to do PR for, you know, the, 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 the guys who have been indicted in all of these exposés? Let me be clear, Umaro. This is not an agenda against the church. I am not seeking to bring down a religion that I will be nobody without. I mean, I have said time without number that, I mean, where will I be without Christianity? Believe in, you know, the saving power, the salvation mm -hmm. grace mm -hmm. of Jesus the Christ. Um, all those who know me from my school days. I mean, Professor Okwe has said time without number. Anytime he's been chairing mm -hmm. the house and when we've had banters, he'll remind me about my, you know, Sunday school days when he'll hand over to me to take over, you know, mm -hmm. and, and preach the gospel. So, so, so. Uh, and in, in, in SU, Presec, I rose to become the vice president. Everybody knows I was the head of the evangelical team. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a pagan. So I'm I'll, not, I'll, get, I'll get to, I, I'll get I, to I'm that. not anti, anti, anti Christ or whatever they say. You see, let's be clear. Ephesians 5:11 enjoins all of us as Christians that when we see wrongdoing, we shouldn't partake in it. We shouldn't fellowship in it. Rather, we should expose it. It says that doing. don't take part in any unfruitful works of darkness. Okay. Expose it. And, and that's all I'm doing. Don't so forget let's, also let, that, Umaru. Let's back, let's back let, me, let me conclude forcefully mm -hmm. on the fact that it is also my constitutional mandate. Recently, you recall that when we were plunged into this economic crisis, there were some who said, look, blame the minority as well. They were looking the other, way. Looking the other way, approving all these loans. We had to defend that, look, at the time in the seventh parliament, when they went on this borrowing spree, we didn't have the numbers. We always had our say they will have their way. You remember the C NTCI loan? Parliament was criticized. I wasn't in the house at the time. That the address led journalists, investigative journalists, to a hairdressing saloon. So we have to decide what do we want? Do we want a functioning parliament, members of parliament who are 
very investigative, who take their oversight role seriously, who will go beyond just what is presented at face value to them and will do the due diligence that is required. Because that's why we are being paid. Mm -hmm. you know? And the whole essence of checks and balances, check the executive, make sure that you are you know, checking abuse of power, checking corruption, you know, preventing waste, preventing, if you like, you know, the plunder, the dissipation of scarce public resources. That is why parliaments okay. have been established all over the world. So we're only doing our work. Let, let's backtrack and take it one point at a time. Uh, so this is the conclusion. So this is a teaser, but let's mm -hmm. go to the back. President Akufado told us that he had a personal commitment to God to build a cathedral. He said it was a priority of priorities. It started and then things went haywire. At what point did the government start getting things wrong in your estimation in this whole project? Is it from the onset or you agree that there should be a national cathedral but then later on you realize that there's a problem? So let me emphasize that from a personal Christian point of view, to beautify our landscape with a national cathedral is not fundamentally a bad idea if we all come together, agree on timing, agree on the scope, agree on where it should be cited, the location, and there's a certain you know, general endorsement. It's not a bad idea. But we got it wrong right from the conceptualization, even before the president cut sword. The president said it was a personal pledge to God. A personal pledge does not metamorphose into a national obligation where taxpayer funds. Look, I've been running for MP in Northton. I've done three primaries. Before I go into every primaries, my, I remember very well the last primaries. I told the Almighty, you help me win. I will go to the Bato Hospital, pay all the bills of everybody on admission. I didn't emerge victorious and then when we call a Deba, went on the local radio station and said that so look, for everybody fans. should you know you have to contribute you know when i was making the personal pledge i didn't know it to be you know so so enormous i immediately right after the same day if you go on my facebook page you see that i was even in powder and all of that with my jubilant executives we went and we asked for the bills and we paid i redeemed my personal pledge it didn't i didn't bother people with it we all make personal pledges so when you say it's a personal pledge that if god helps you win the election you will build a church in anna look i know of many guys for example the first guy group ceo He's built, what, over 80 churches at the last count? He doesn't come to disturb, you know, the larger, you know, society that, you know, the people must pay for it. So that whole conceptualization, personal pledge to God, you should pursue a personal pledge as a personal pledge. And that's why you won't find it in the MPP manifesto. You won't find it in any of the budgets. There was no parliamentary approval. So when you say a personal pledge, and you even call the clergy, you know that there are some of the eminent respected clergy of our country who have even bent their fingers because somebody like Archbishop Duncan Williams who I revere, I hold in high esteem went public that he's received full assurance from the president, we are not coming after your taxes, so everybody shut up, Reverend Joyce Ayi viewers can google, she also put her credibility on the line, we are not going to use taxes, it's the president's personal pledge, he has invited the Christian community to support and that's what we are doing you remember James Kwabna Bonfe went to the Supreme Court that, hey, I sense that we are going to open the floodgates. Should a president be spearheading a national cathedral project? What if the Muslims say we want a national mosque from taxes? What if the traditionalists say that we want a national shrine? So don't accept this. Supreme Court, step in. Let's stop the president. He's going to open the floodgates. The Attorney General, I have the statement of defense he filed said clearly in April 2018 that no, there will be no taxes used. And that is how come the Supreme Court dismissed Kabila's case and said, hey, James Kwabna Bonfe, you are crying foul. Your, 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 the, 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 the basis, the foundation for your fear, your anxiety is unfounded. And so we've had the government's attorney general, we are not going to use state resources. So at what point did all of this 
you know, the clergy had been misled. The Supreme Court, the Apex Court, you know, had been misled. The entire country had been misled. Until you recall, I started intercepting documents sometime last year, March last year. I was shocked, shocked to the marrow. I intercepted 25 million withdrawal signed by the finance minister. Then 142 million signed by the finance minister. Then another 32 million direct payment to David Ajay, the architect, from the presidency. I was like, hmm, what's going on here? That's when I started. Is that you know, not part far. of what the government referred to as seed fund for the project? So you see, in the 2019 budget, they had then cleverly talked about a seed fund. In the debate in November 2018, we said that if you are saying seed fund, clearly that is a shift. Can we even first of all have a debate? If as a country, looking at the state of our economy, where we are now, I mean, the Christian community really, anytime there are polls, anytime from CDD, Afrobarometer, I mean, IEA, name them, on priorities, you always see roads, education, jobs, health delivery. Never has we need a cathedral featured. We need a big church. We don't think our church is nice enough featured in any of those 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 surveys however if you the president thinks that the personal pledge should metamorphose into a national agenda a national project let's have a debate let's open it up let us have that we know how projects become national it's first debated in parliament it is budgeted for clearly there's a line item so just mentioning seed money and then we ask where would that seed money come from how much is the seed money all of these requests went blank. I interviewed Dr. Reverend Joyce Ayer recently, and she explained to me that when they met the president, the president gave them the impression that they, the church leaders, could spearhead the building. The government was going to supply the seed funds. I asked her if she knew what percentage government was going to give. At the time, she could not readily give me a figure. But she suggested that what well, the giving of the land and all of those things was the government support. So your point is that aside the land that has been given, there's more money of the tax payer that has been pushed in there, even before the one that you recently rejected. Yes, yes. And thanks to the vote of Central Committee, we asked the finance minister exactly how much, because the documents I intercepted came to about 200 million. But we suspected that there was more. Our suspicion was confirmed when later, in his written response, he was initially reluctant, but we insisted that, look, we will not submit a report to the floor. The vote of censure vote will remain hanging around your neck like the sword of Damocles until you provide clear answers. So he reluctantly did after three days. And to our shock, when we thought it was around 200 million, actually it was more, it was 339 million. The exchange rate at the time, if you do the conversion, $58 million. Can you believe that? $58 million of taxpayer funds. Now, you ask all of them, all government officials we have been asking, what is this seed money? What's the percentage? Nobody is telling us. So $339 million. And as Bishop Dak Heward Mill said in his famous resignation letter, which your station intercepted, he even was generous. He said $30 million and all you have is a pit. It's actually $58 million by what the finance minister has presented to parliament. I call it a galam suicide. And do you know what, Umaru? Since the 14th of March, 2022, 10 months now, the contractors have abandoned the project. I have a copy of the termination letter they served on all their workers. They said that for lack of funds, government has not been paying them. So you ask, and I have been talking to key insiders within you know, the company, which is a joint venture, uh, Rizani Di Eka, Babi Soti, and Di Simone. They came together to form Rebadi. They are shocked at the huge figures all over the place. And it is not surprising that you have seen all these massive diversions and you don't see the project being executed. So, Could it be because the project is so huge that the amount of money sunk into it may be insignificant to raise a building. You know the cost of putting up a building. So, so that, is, that is also a major challenge we have with this project. 
How is it that a project which we were told by the finance minister, he first announced to the hearing of everybody, to the general public, that it will cost $100 million. Then it went to 150. The secretary to the board of trustees announced that, Reverend Kusi Boatin, who is now beleaguered. Then we were told by the chairman, Reverend Opoku Onyina, who I respect very much, that it's moved to 200 million. Then it went to 250. 300 inflation. 350 inflation inflation at that rate no it doesn't when you calculate it, it inflation cannot be the reason and now guess what i have done the analysis based on fresh documentation i have arrived at at this moment it is going to cost the ghanaian taxpayer about a billion dollars 100 million times 10 yes about a billion dollars. For you, 100 million. Yes, can you believe that? To 10 times of can that. Can you believe that? And a billion dollars is what we used to, the Mills Mahama period, used to set up the Ghana gas project, which is earning us over 400 million dollars every year. This is what we are doing with it. And you, you, your setting of this video? Oh, yes. Where did you get it yes, from? Because, because the 400 million dollars that is talked about, which is a popular figure, I have the documentation here. That is the, if you look at the contract with Rebadi, it is 383 million, which has been rounded up. But there are so many exclusions. So Rebadi is a consortium? No, that is the, it's a joint venture of okay. the actual contract. Yes. They are the contractors. Mm -hmm. Now, in the contract, I have cited not less than 10 exclusions, which are not part of that figure. Share some. S variations. The... Cathedral Secretariat has told them that they want to add a biblical gardens and a Bible museum. It was not part of the original concept. So those variations will come at an additional cost. They are talking about a special biblical restaurant. You know, it's going to come at a cost. Professional fees have not, are not part of the, the 383, which is rounded up to $400 million. Then they are talking about the fees that will be charged upon Ghana when there is a break in construction. And now we have, we've done 10 months already. They say it will come at a fee. So for, so, for parking so, their tools and leaving sites. Exactly, leaving site. Because so, of government's failure, there's exactly. money that's supposed to be paid to them. Exactly. So there are all of this, and I can read that to you. These are the, so I told you about professional fees. Then items under consideration, that's excavations, rock. It's not part of the cost. Then there is savings on import duties. Already, the contract says that they are not to pay duties, levies, and taxes. For bringing in... Yes. That is another fundamental breach of the Constitution. Only Parliament can, can, can grant that waiver. And yet, this National Cathedral Secretariat, I don't know if the Board of Trustees endorsed that, because it's a clear violation of the Constitution. So all of that is excluded. Then... Escalation of construction costs due to COVID and global inflation is excluded. Extension of time claims and cost implications of same excluded. Finance charges on unpaid amounts to main contractor is excluded. Standing time claims for main contractor, these standing times. Mm? Abortive and rework costs due to main contractor suspension. Already, they have told some of us that because of the long period of suspension, they have to do reworks. All of what has been pumped in is financial loss to the state. They have to do everything again. Then, the museum displays and the fit out. All of this cost you hear, the 400 million dollars, it's just the shell. The content of the museum, what will be put there, because people are not coming to look at an empty building. We say we want to attract tourists from all over the world. Those artifacts and all, it's, it's excluded. So when you add all those things, and it's clear, it's stated in the contract. How about the transplanting of the trees that were there, the removal of the judges? Have you costed all of that? Is it, is it outside the 400 or inside the 400? So that is outside the 400 million dollars. Okay. Let so, me come back. Let me come back. This is face to face on City TV. My guest is the Honorable Samuel Okizwa Black, where we're discussing the National Cathedral. He's just breaking down for us the cost involved in putting up the project. He says it's gone up to 1 billion. Ghana cities, that's how dollars. much dollars. Okay, that's how much he's saying. And if you want to extend that into CD and dollar rate, I don't know what figure you're going to come up with. But when we come back, I'll ask him to list a few more items and then we'll go into this um, expose that he has been doing in recent times involving the executive secretary to the 
to the board, plus the call for an audit of the works of the committee or the, the, the board that is building the cathedral from two revered reverends. It's City on the Go. You don't have to miss any of your favorite television and radio shows on City TV and City FM. Enjoy thrilling content from your world of great television and relevant radio at your convenience. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube. Turn on your notification button and receive prompts on our live streaming sessions and new content uploads. For easy access to the CityTube page, scan the barcode on your screens. Subscribe to the CityTube you page and voila unlimited content awaits you don't forget to subscribe to city tube for amazing content from city tv and city fm Welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My guest is the Honorable Samuel Kujito Ablako. So before we went on the break, you were explaining to me things that are outside the 400 million, why you have been able to calculate this to take us all the way, and that's more than 100%. So yes. you're saying that's what, that should be 150% more than Absolutely. what has been projected. Absolutely. And, and let me continue. It's a tall list. Then you now have to consider the compensation burden on the Ghanaian taxpayer. So the very mindless and reckless decision to cite this project at a place where we had so many existing edifices that the president decided to pull down and now we know after the dark Heward mills resignation letter when he said that look he had issues with the location with the choice of the architect the national cathedral secretariat issued a statement in response saying that that was the president's decision they technically absorbed themselves and said that it's the president who decided that we should cite this project where it is now. Mm -hmm. That has been the most reckless decision ever taken by any president. Why do I say that? The cost implications. As we speak, the scholarship secretariat has been demolished. And it grieves my heart so much. If you look at the rich history of the scholarship secretary, these are buildings that in other jurisdictions they are preserved. Because you look at the greats, the icons who went through that scholarship secretariat, the likes of Osajifu, Kwame Krumah, you know, Professor Mills, Kofi Annan, you know, Professor Nana, Jeno Poku Ajima, all of these greats who at one point in time, in their young life growing up, and we say that we, are, we, we want to boost our Pan-African, you know, tourism potential, such a building rich 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 history people would love to come and see elsewhere they are preserved they are listed even before you carry out any renovation it's been demolished we don't know where we are going to cite a new scholarship secretary the passport office demolished i know as ranking member of the foreign affairs committee that it has had to cost the government 10 million ghana cities to relocate them then the judges who were living in that enclave about 14 of them, superior court judges. We have had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars relocating them temporarily at cantonments, paying rent. Now we have to build, and that construction has started. I'm told they are almost done. We are, we are spending millions of Ghana cities reconstructing permanent bungalows for these judges. You have to add that to the $400 million. It's not part of the $400 million which is bandied about. Then you have to include the fact that the Judicial Training Institute, another very important edifice, rich history, eminent juries of various Commonwealth jurisdictions have come to this Judicial Training Institute from Rwanda to Gambia, Sierra Leone, you name them, including local eminent juries trained there. It's been demolished. And guess what? The Chief Justice, I have seen his proposal, $15 million is what it's going to cost us to replace the Judicial Training Institute. So you need to add that. You have to factor that in the equation. Then don't forget, the Malian ambassador had his residence demolished 
I have cited the agreement with the Malian government. We've told them we'll relocate them at airport residential. You know the cost of land at airport residential. And then we say we'll construct a new residence for them. Can you imagine? We are behaving as if we are the richest nation on earth. So you have to add all of this. Then don't forget that there were private companies demolished. The Comsys IT firm, their headquarters was demolished. They are now being temporarily hosted at Laboni. They are waiting for their full compensation claims. Then you have another private company called Waterstone Realty. They have a luxury apartment complex. They had employed 180 people who are now all unemployed. All of that new, modern, luxury apartment complex was raised to the ground. Nothing now is... now mm. they are in, in court. Mm. They are the high court mm. seeking judgment debt of 120 million Ghana cities. The last time, uh, and that was before we went into all this exchange rate crisis. I'm sure by now it's hovering around 200 million Ghana cities. Mm. Mm. So when you add all of this... It's over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you believe that? Nothing, Look, nothing. and let me put it in context. Yes. You see the celebrated UGMC. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost us more than $250 million to build the University of Ghana Medical Center. So four times of that. Yes, Terminal 3 that we celebrate all over. $217 million. So put this in context. I mean, can you believe that? Nothing is very expensive to give to God. So says Reverend Dr. Josiah when I spoke to her. It is God we are talking about. If you spend so much on God, he would spend back on you. Ivory Coast put up probably the most flamboyant cathedral under President Ufe Boani. It didn't stop Ivory Coast, sadly, and we all regret it, from suffering civil war conflict. You see, we are New Testament Christians. And let's go back to pure and true Christian theology. What is the Christian doctrine of New Testament Christians? Is that the Holy Ghost has been left with us. He resides in us. Know ye all that your body is the temple of the Lord. So we should rather put emphasis on personal values, personal integrity, you know, we are not in the Old Testament where, you know, it's, it's about buildings. And, and, and you see, if you look at even the international arena now, we, we are very late. The, the, the era of cathedrals where that's what shows that you have arrived as a country. The cathedral revolution. Mind. The cathedral revolution is long past. If, if, if you're conversant with world history, I mean, those were what? 10,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. So we shouldn't be chasing you that. Know, so, and, 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 and let me also emphasize that. Mm. Look, what did Christ tell the Pharisees when the Pharisees thought that, you know, he had embarrassed the Sadducees? There was this Pharisee lawyer who thought that, you know, smart lawyer. So he said, Jesus Christ, what was the greatest commandment? And Jesus Christ told them, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. But the next after that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus Christ didn't say, when you build or you give me expensive gifts, love your neighbor. If you are a leader, a Christian leader, and you live in a country where basic amenities have not been met, there is no potable water. Look at the, the rate of joblessness. Population and housing census says that we have unemployment at an all-time high. That will always be there, we are told. You know? Joblessness is part of no, us. No, but, but Christian leadership, must, must be empathetic, must remember that loving your neighbor as yourself is by having your priorities right. Yeah, but we always have the challenges and yet we still put our, our money elsewhere. I mean, we go to the World Cup, for instance, and people say, don't go to the World Cup. Former President Mahama says, don't host the All-African Games because we are in that time. But we'll still do it. During his time, we carried money to Brazil. These things will happen regardless of the situation on the ground, don't they? So, you see, it is important to put this discussion in context. You are in the midst of economic crisis, untold economic difficulties, unprecedented. In my lifetime, throughout my lifetime, I've, I've never seen a, a domestic debt exchange program. Were you not born before 83? I've never seen a domestic debt exchange program. And my reading of the literature is that this is the first time 
of the what 17 or 18 IMF programs. This is the first time we are doing a domestic debt exchange program. This is the first time we are doing a total freeze on employment. So we are not in normal times where pensioners have to cry. I mean, some of the videos I can't watch to the end say, don't touch my pensions. These are my life savings. I use it for medication. Don't touch it. So, so the timing so, is wrong. So the timing is horrible. Let's and you see, mm -hmm. I'm not the only one saying it. Last year, I was so impressed with the Catholic Bishop Conference when they issued a statement in June last year urging the government to hold on that this is not a time to be building a cathedral. And you see, even if we should be building a cathedral, should, it, should this be the model where we demolish all of this? We are behaving like, look, I have studied cathedrals all over from Washington to Cologne to Milan, you know, to, the, to, to, to St. Paul's in London. They didn't adopt this reckless part. And these are much wealthier nations. And they were not even using taxes. Let's get to you know, the... We, we, we adopt a model where, I mean, it's the most expensive. I can't believe the level Let's of recklessness. Let's go to the Reverend Victor Kusi Boatin factor. Do you have a personal issue with him? Not at all. He Not has all. responded to some of the points, although sadly. Do those responses satisfy you? Not at all. You know that those are no responses at all. And I must emphasize that when I began this investigation into the payment to JNS, I did not know for the life of me, and God knows, the heavens know, that it will end at the doorstep or, if you like, the bedroom of Reverend Kusi Boateng or Kwabna Edu Jemfi. I don't know which really is his real name. I don't know with all the documentation I've gathered. So, this document, when the National Cathedral Secretariat came to Parliament for approval of their 80 million cities in the 2023 budget, we then said, look, Finance Minister has told the vote of Central Committee that you have withdrawn 339 million for this project on our blind side, unconstitutional. No problem. We want to see the utilization. How did you utilize the 339? Because that is the role of any responsible parliament. You don't just go granting approvals. Mm -hmm. You must first find out how previous releases have been utilized. So when we requested that, they brought us this document. And they stated here, <clears throat> under summary of disbursement of the seed money, JNS Talent Center Limit, Limited, 2.6 million. And the subheading is contractors mobilization. If you're a diligent member of parliament, you know that there's only one contractor, Rebade, the Rebade JV, which is Rizani the Eka, Babisoti, and the Simone. However, there's another addition, JNS Talent Center. First time I'm seeing it. You go through the entire documentation, over 200 pages. There's no contract, no agreement, no supporting document at all for this payment. Hmm. You get suspicious. So I say, ah, how is it that I know of only one contractor, Rebadi? They have received contractors' mobilization. But what is JNS also doing here? I must look into it. I obtained the incorporation documents. And then I discovered that JNS has three directors, Johannes Eshen, Sheila Eshen, and one Kwabna Edu Jemfi. Hmm, interesting. What do they do? Now, why was it important to get the incorporation? Because you want to know the nature of the company. So then it can guide you to know what services they what do. What they do. What, what they do. They exactly. What service they are rendering under this project. So I check their object of business. And it turns out that it is a skills and talent development company. I said, hmm, skills and talent development. What are they doing here? A cathedral project. They are not contractors. They are not engineers. They are not architects. Very strange. I dig deeper. I realize that the only thing they've done is to set up a crash somewhere at Dawenya. Few innocent holy souls. What are they doing here at Cathedral Project? So let me dig deeper. Then I discover that apparently these are pastors. So Johannes Eshen is a junior pastor, a branch pastor of Reverend Kusi Boatin's church, the Power Chapel Worldwide. And Sheila Eshen is his wife. So I called up Sheila. That was the only number. In the documents I, I, I managed to intercept. And she picks up and says, oh, You know, yes, um, yeah, we received some payments from National Cathedral Secretary, but you see, my, my husband is the MD and um, he has all the facts. Uh, so, wait, he's out of the country. When he returns in two weeks, then um, we'll call you back. 
So the call never came. Of course, I sent people to the church to check if I was being told the truth, and <laughs> there he was preaching. So the claim that he was even out of the country was not was not true. My my team was in the church. They had a nice Sunday service with Johannes Eshen. So I said, hmm, this is interesting. But in all of this, the third director remained elusive. There was no digital footprint, no evidence at all that he's around. You know, when you go on their website, the crash, you see, you know, Joanne Sechen, Shele Shen, they are on Facebook and all of that. But there's no... Kovne Dujemfi. No Kovne Dujemfi. Mystery figure. With the name of my schoolmate at GIJ, by the Interesting. way. Interesting. Yeah. So this guy was elusive, evasive, you know, nowhere to be found. I was like, hmm. Let me just dig deeper. How did this guy get to register a company? What is his thing? What ID did this guy use? Lo and behold, to the shock of my life, I see Reverend Kusibuatin's picture in a passport that was used. And the name is Kobne Dujenfi. So, hmm, what's going on here? I thought it was a secondary conflict of interest where money being paid to a junior pastor for no work done. These guys have no business receiving contractors' mobilization at the National Cathedral construction site. Uh, but no, this is looking more direct. Direct conflict of interest. He's paying money to himself. Hmm, what's happening? Let me dig deeper. Let me check how he got incorporated at the National Cathedral Security. Then I discovered that he has a driving license, which he uses to when he wants to do Victor Kusibuatin. And even that, his driving license that has expired. So the National Cathedral Secretariat has questions to answer. They incorporated the National Cathedral Secretariat on the 18th of July, 2019. The driving license of Victor Kusibuatin expired in 2016. And yet, that's what was used. Ironically, as for the unexpired documents of Bishop Dakewood Mills, they didn't use it, you know, and deceived him, used his effigy on their websites. He thought he was part of the Board of Trustees. Apparently, he wasn't. He was never registered. And yet they had gone to use expired documents to register Victor Kusibuatin. Then I said, hmm, let me dig up further. Let me track this guy. Uh, how is he traveling now? Uh, you know that I have some expertise in tracking even the president. You've been tracking aeroplanes. Yes, so tracking even, human beings is easier if, for Yeah, <laughs> and, and even the commander-in-chief will track mm. uh, how much more, you know, Reverend Victor Kusibuatin. Uh, uh. So we did some tracking. And lo and behold... This is a man busily traveling on a diplomatic passport. So, hmm. Which is not wrong. Diplomatic passport. I haven't said it's wrong, but, you know, diplomatic passport, it's, it's highly restricted. It's not, it's not issued to just anybody. But it's highly, issued to people. Yes, it's issued, but mm -hmm. with discretion and all of that. So let me, let, me, let me dig further and see what is happening with this diplomatic passport and uh, uh, what, what, what name there is. Then I discovered that, interestingly, this diplomatic passport, which was issued to him on the 25th of November 2021 and will expire on the 24th of November 2026, has passport number DX006845. So very recently acquired. It's in the name Kwabna Edu Jemfi. So, so you are appointed as Victor Kusibuatin. However, a diplomatic passport given to you to aid your work, so your fundraising and your travel around, meeting officials and all of that. Has a different name. Has a different name. Let me take a break at this point. This is face to face on City TV. My guest is the member of Parliament. When we come back. I'll ask him what questions does the church or the cathedral have have to answer, and Victor Kusibuat in himself. What questions does he have to answer, and where will these answers be given? Please stay with us. Hello and welcome to the Effective Living Series 2023. Another year is upon us and we are poised to kickstart this new revolution with the utmost zeal. City TV and City FM present to you another rewarding season of the Effective Living Series. This year, the Effective Living Series will be riding on the back of the theme 2023 Starter Pack, Building Back Better. Every week, in the month of January, our team of renowned experts, alongside our exceptional host, Bernard Avlet, will delve into various thematic areas that have been carefully selected to cater to your holistic well
well-being in the coming year. Week 1 will focus on the importance of physical preparation for 2023. After that, we will take a look at emotional and mental health imperatives for 2023 in our second weekly series. Then, we will proceed to the third weekly series with emphasis on professional priorities for 2023. In our fourth and final week, we will dig into the strategic conversation on building financial foundations for 2023. The Effective Living Series will be live on the City Breakfast Show on 97.3 City FM at 9 a.m. and on Breakfast Daily on City TV at 9.30 a.m. from Monday through till Thursday. So join us and let's get ready to be equipped with practical information for building back better in 2023. The Effective Living Series is sponsored by Enterprise Insurance and Hallmark Freights and Logistics Ghana Limited. Welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. So, what are the key, key questions that you have? Who is supposed to answer these questions? So many people. Look, this latest expose reveals the paralysis in our system. State institutions are not working. They are being totally dribbled and swindled. The GRA. I have discovered that Reverend Kusi Boatin, he has seven companies in the name Kusi Boatin, and then eight companies in the name Kwabna Edujevi. Can you believe that? Is, is it wrong for a person to have two names? A house name on, and on a... On official document, is the, it wrong? It's, the it's, the it's cathedral illegal. secretary boss said it's a house name this, and this, a, this, this, a street name. A house name, you keep it at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can use it for house business. House business. So which one is the house business? Is it the Reverend Minister rule or is it the, 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 the cathedral rule or JNS? You know? No, you cannot. If you are flying domestic, then, you use look, house The name. whole essence of Ghana card, biometric, biometric passport, is to avoid this. Then I can have five passports. You can have seven. Even when it comes to voting, you can have ten cards. Are we going to accept that? Would the election be declared credible? So, so, he so, has two so, passports. So, so, so he, has, he has multiple ident identity cards with different names, different date of birth. So even this argument about, oh, home name, native name. So is there a native calendar which makes 30th December 1969 the same as 7th September 1971? Interestingly, when his church and family members were celebrating his 50th birthday last year, and prominent Ghanaians went there and all of that, his own passport, his current passport, which he travels with now, he says he was born 30 December 1969. He was 50 years, like three years ago, and two years before they were celebrating him based on what he has told them, what is on his website. So different dates of birth. That's fraudulent. Different mothers. I have secured all the forms. People have said, oh, you know, you can get two things in error. But the, the GRA says that you quickly must apply for ratification. ratification because it is illegal to have multiple things, the taxpayer identification number. Everybody is entitled to one. Guess what? He is taking no step, and he's rather profiting from it. As recent as last week, the 16th of January, when I tracked, he's going to open a new company for insurance brokerage as Kwabna Edu Jemfi, a different thing. Last week, 16th of January. So this is somebody who is consciously, and he's using it concurrently. So it's not as if, oh, I have, okay, I've repented, I'm born again, have reserved one 10 years ago or five years ago, I haven't returned to it. No, as we speak, currently, he's serving on the board of trustees of the National Cathedral of Ghana as Kusi Boating. And yet, he's traveling his diplomatic passport, his Kwabna Edujenfi. He has multiple companies, at 15 companies now, eight in the name of Kwabna Edu Jemfi, seven in the name of Victor Kusibuati. It's not allowed. So, who pays taxes? Do you know what surnames his children use? Yes, yes, I've, I've tracked all of that, and his wife as well. And um, what surnames do they, they use? They use Kusibuati. So they don't use Kwabna Edu Jemfi? No. Could it be, and have you thought of the possibility yeah. that this Kwabna Edu Jemfi person is not and may not be even related to Kosi Boatin in any way. And no, that maybe no. this is just sheer coincidence. No, 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 no. It's him. It's him. I have the diplomatic passport here. 
I've tracked his travels. I have videos. And of, the biometrics of, of, prove that he's the Pabna, same human of Pabna being. Of Edu at work. Yes, the biometrics prove that it's him. It's him. And that is why. Simple questions. All these statements. Oh, after I will go to Shraj. And then after Shraj, I'll take him on. Just state the fact now. Last Sunday, he says, oh, when you are going up, demons will, will disturb you. I don't know which app. Is it up the, you know, mysterious ladder, fraudulent ladder, corruption ladder? I don't know which, which, which app. Because it's a simple matter. So I am Reverend Victor Kusibuatin. I'm not the same person as Kabine Dujenfi. I have one date of birth. Simple. It, simple. I have, done I have one mother. Simple. So you have and two you see, mothers according to your record? Yes, because when he was feeling for these things, because he wanted to outwit the GRA. And you see, all these institutions should be issuing statements now, carrying out internal investigations and telling us how is it that they have been so, or is it that they are complicit? I mean, how did they take advantage of them so easily? GRA, Registrar General's Department, Passport Office, DVLA. How did this happen? And they are all quiet. I am I'm totally disappointed. I mean, so this whole essence of digitalizing, uh, having a Ghana card, I mean, what's the essence? So, so you see, when he was filling the GRA forms, the, the tax registration forms, the individual forms, in order to create a different personality, a double identity, he provided a different name for his mother when he was doing it as Kobne Dujenfi. He said his mother is Ya Jemfua. Then when he returned three years later to obtain another thing, this time as Victor Kusibuatin, he said the mother is Agnes Atta. And then on the form, you are told, you are asked clearly, have you applied before? Do you have a thing? He said, no, I've never applied. I've, I don't have a thing. Why are you doing this? We have to go now, but... Archbishop Duncan Williams and Isuda Naba have jointly communicated and they are asking for an audit of the cathedral. You be, I'm sure you agree with them. Should that end it? First of all, let me commend His Eminence, the Archbishop, Nicholas Duncan Williams, and my own pastor, uh, Reverend Isuda Naba, uh, senior daddy whom we hold in high esteem. They have done great they have showed leadership, wisdom, which is commendable. Very nationalistic approach. They are calling for a suspension, first of all, which I agree. And they say in their memo, which the media has cited, that the atmospherics, the ecosystem is not good. The economic conditions are terrible. We cannot continue with this project. And they're also concerned about the escalating costs. And I agree with them. Over a billion dollars at this time. So I salute them. And then the audit they are calling for, I commend them. My only concern is it would, I would be glad to see an internationally acclaimed audit firm independently appointed. It shouldn't be just one of those internal audits. I hope that it will be external, international, independent body. So I commend them for their stance. I think that that should be the way forward. But we shouldn't end there. The audits, I am clear in my mind, is going to lead to a situation where a lot of people must return Ghana's monies to them, to us, I should say, to the Ghanaian people, particularly a gentleman called Kari Sames of the Nehemiah Group, a dodgy American indicted for antiquity fraud. He is keeping 28.2 million Ghana cities of our money, $6 million. And I tell you, there was no board approval, no board resolution. A lot of these board of trustees heard me talk about it for the first time mm -hmm. on, 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 on radio. So... A lot of these people keeping our money must refund our, 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 our money to In us. 30 seconds, and a what? lot of these agreements that have been signed with mm -hmm. people like David Ajay and all of that, ripping us off, will have to be, you know, reworked, renegotiated. So I, 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 would, I would say that that's an important first step. Okay. But we must not end there. There has to be retrievers, possible sanctions, renegotiations of agreements, rescoping. And then we have to also quickly move in some of these court cases and see how we can seek an immediate out of court and then you know as mitigate okay. the the cost implications in 30 of the, seconds of the you are charged what 
is a parliamentary tool you're going to deploy if you would deploy any from 7th uh, February when you guys resume? Yes, so Shraj is for the conflict of interest. So mm -hmm. that's a narrow part, conflict of interest. And clearly in the Baba Kamara case, there's, yeah. there's, there's authority, legal precedence that, you know, even private people, reverend ministers, whoever, you know, can be investigated by Shraj, particularly once public funds are involved. So, so we are in Shraj for the conflict of interest, like that dubious payment of 2.6 million, we must get to the bottom. And then when Parliament resumes, the aspect relating to the diplomatic passport, what due diligence was done? How is it that you appoint somebody, give him an appointment letter as Reverend Kusi Boating, and then when you are issuing him a diplomatic passport, two years after, you appointed him 2019, July 2019, November 2021, you are issuing him a diplomatic passport to enhance his work and his movements and all of that. And it is in another name. Are you complicit? So the foreign Is there affairs a conspiracy? Minister. So the foreign affairs minister will be summoned okay. before us to answer questions. Very well. We need to end it here. Thank you so much for joining us on Face to Face. Pleasure. That was your noble Samuel Kujetua Blaka. My name is Umaru Sandamado. Thank you for watching. Stay with City TV. It's your world.